Hi, welcome to Modeling and Simulation of Dynamical Systems. In this video, I would like to continue with the introduction to formats of mathematical models. In particular, I would like to talk about second-order models. We've already been expo exposed to an example of uh, one such second-order model, in particular the second Newton's law, a single object exposed to an external force. Mass times acceleration is equal to the external force. In this case, we will consider a system consisting of several masses, so we will have several variables uh, describing the position x1 through xn. Therefore the original description now extends to a matrix vector uh, description where instead of a single scalar mass we have a matrix of masses. In fact we can make it even more general by considering also the terms corresponding to the first derivative that means uh, damping and the term corresponding to zero of derivative corresponding to stiffness. On the right hand side we have a matrix B which selects or assigns the individual external forces to uh, the masses. Now all the coefficients m, d and k are masses. Once again x and u are vectors. Let's have a look at an example. I've said that the motivation is an, a, a capability to model multiple masses. So let's have just three of them. They are interconnected through springs and dampers. And let's label them 1, 2, 3, start from the left with masses m1, m2, and 3 and the corresponding stiffness and damping coefficients are k1, uh, k2, k3, d1, d2, d3 and the rightmost object is exposed to an external force. The motion is positive to the right. Now writing the equations is as simple as applying Newton's law to the individual masses. So for the first mass m1 times the acceleration 1 is equal to the sum of uh, the forces. So we start with the forces on the left where we have a force corresponding to the spring, to the damper and similarly for the forces on the right. Uh, similarly for the, for the second mass again m2 times the acceleration 2 is equal to the sum of forces acting on the left. Yeah, I forgot to add the prime in the first equation. And then uh, forces acting on the right. Finally, the third mass also has uh, the same pattern on the left and on the right hand side we just have, I mean, the force acting from the right is just external force F. Now, uh, we can rewrite this in a matrix vector format, which, on, which I find quite compact. In this case, all the coefficients m are structured into or, or assembled into a matrix m. It's a diagonal matrix. Then uh, we will have a term corresponding to, to the first derivatives, x1 prime, x2 prime, x3 prime, and uh, from now on I will not mention explicitly the dependence on time. Similarly, we will need to find a matrix that is corresponding to the zero of the derivative. On the right hand side in this equation we need to fill in the matrix B, which in this case is just a column with all ones and a single non-zero element is at the bottom. So now we need to fill in the remaining two matrices. For the matrix corresponding to the velocities, we, the pattern is like this. Oops, actually it's not. K, it's D, but the pattern is identical. So D1 plus D2, D2 plus D3 and D3 on the main diagonal and minus D2 and minus D3 on uh, both sub-diagonals and the zeros everywhere else. The same pattern is now kept uh, by the matrix, uh, it should be K, not C, the matrix that uh, is corresponding to, to the stiffness. Now, uh, what can we do with this particular model in order to, to analyze it? Uh, similar as we did in the scalar case, we can now convert it into a state space uh, model. We will do it uh, simply by introducing a new uh, state vector, additional state vector, which is uh, V, simply velocity. And then the new state vector is uh, composed of, uh, of the two x and v. So we need to find now the new matrices uh, a and b. Filling in the empty spots here is uh, relatively simple. The first row just corresponds to, to the definition of the new state vector. That means x prime is equal to v. The second row is just uh, the second Newton's law. Notice, however, that uh, 
that uh, it already contains uh, in the version of the matrix M of the mass matrix. This procedure has two major caveats. First, as you've noticed, we have this inversion of ma M matrix in, uh, in the equation above. That can be a trouble. On the one hand, it's always guaranteed to be invertible because the masses are simply non-zero. Non On the other hand, uh, with the disproportion masses, the matrix M can be close to singular. Hence, numerical inversion can be unreliable. The second disadvantage is that by doing this uh, transformation to state space, we are losing structural information. Note that in the original model, we knew that the matrix M is symmetric and positive definite. The matrices D and K are symmetric, whereas uh, now the new state matrix A is, uh, it does have some structure, it has zero here and the identity matrix here, still it may be more difficult somehow to work with this structure. In this course we will encounter this second order model later in the course when we discuss Euler-Lagrange technique for modeling of robotic manipulators. In that case there will be two major changes. First instead of X we will use another symbol, that's because the motion here is not characterized just as a translation but as a rotation as well so we'll use Q for these generalized coordinates and the second change is that the matrices here will depend on the configuration as well the mass matrix here called generalized mass matrix bill will depend just on Q but the damping matrix depends on uh, on the derivative of Q as well and similarly for the stiffness term K which will in general be nonlinear uh, so the advantage of this ex this expression or this format is that no matter what Q is, we always know that something holds for the M, M matrix. But let's uh, wait with this till some something like middle of the course.